In an earlier video, I introduced you to what a CCDT was and how you could create one of your own. CCDTs allow applications to get the information that they need to connect to queue managers dynamically, which makes them particularly useful in a uniform cluster setting. By populating a CCDT with the channel definitions for all the queue managers in the uniform cluster, applications will have all the information that they need to connect to any queue manager that they're rebalanced to. However, it's not enough to just have channel definitions for each queue manager. Say that an application specified that it wants to connect to QM1 and does this using a CCDT which contained only channel definitions for the individual queue managers. It would be able to do so provided that QM1 is available. However, if QM1 became temporarily unavailable, the application will not be able to connect to it or any other queue manager in the uniform cluster. So we need a way for applications to connect to uniform clusters independent of any particular queue manager. This is where the concept of connection lists comes in. We need to define a single channel definition which contains the connection information for all of the queue managers in a uniform cluster. The application then simply needs to specify that it wants to connect to this list, which will ensure that it connects to any available queue manager in that uniform cluster. Let's explore this further with an example. Imagine we have a uniform cluster comprised of three queue managers, QM1, QM2 and QM3, connected to local host at port 1411, 1412 and 1413 respectively. The CCDT for this uniform cluster would look like this. Except for the first one, we have three standard channel definitions for our three queue managers. The first channel definition uses a connection list, so let's look at that more closely. The queue manager name in this list is AnyQM and it specifies three connections for each of the queue managers in the uniform cluster. We could have set the queue manager name to be anything and it would work in the same way. Any QM was just chosen for readability. The queue managers in this list belong to the same uniform cluster. So once a client is connected to any one of these, we can guarantee it's in the correct uniform cluster. The client application will specify any QM as the queue manager it wants to connect to and begin connection attempts from the first entry in the list until it's able to connect to a queue manager. To connect to the uniform cluster, we set the queue manager name in the application to any QM, which means it can only connect to queue managers of that name. This works well to initially bring the application to the uniform cluster, but once it's in, it will be asked to connect to specific queue managers, in our example QM1, QM2 or QM3. This is because our uniform cluster has no knowledge of any QM. This was simply a grouping that we created. Once it's in, we want the application to connect to any queue manager given its actual name. To do this, we simply need to set the queue manager name to star any QM in the client application. The star acts as a wildcard and tells the application that it shouldn't be too concerned with the actual queue manager name, as long as its connection information can be found in the any QM connection list. You're probably wondering, why do we need the other three channel definitions if the first one contains all the information that we need to connect to any queue manager in the uniform cluster? The point is, that first channel definition does contain the information to connect to any queue manager. But in a uniform cluster, your application will be told to go to a specific queue manager. So we need to have channel definitions based on the specific names of each queue manager. For example, your application might enter the uniform cluster by connecting to QM1 and later be asked to connect to QM3. If we only had the first channel definition, the application would look for a queue manager named QM3 in the CCDT and be unable to find it so it wouldn't reconnect. But having the specific channel definitions means that it can connect to a specific queue manager by name once it's in the uniform cluster. It's important to note that no extra developer intervention is needed for application rebalancing. The MQ client libraries take responsibility for connecting to queue managers and the process is invisible to your application. So here we can see our application has specified star any QM as the queue manager it wants to connect to. It looks in the CCDT for the connection information corresponding to that queue manager and finds the AnyQM connection list. Within this, there is the connection information for QM1, QM2 and QM3, and the application will attempt connections to each one starting from the top. In this case, it was able to connect to QM1 and is now successfully connected to the uniform cluster. Later, as part of balancing, the application is asked to reconnect to QM3. To do this, the application looks in the CCDT for a channel definition with queue manager name QM3. It then uses the connection information found here to reconnect. CCDTs allow your application to be reliably reconnected in a uniform cluster, provided you do these key things. 
Specify a connection list that contains the connection information for all the queue managers in the uniform cluster. Set the value of the queue manager attribute in your client application to the queue manager name in this connection list, prefixed by a star. Define specific channel definitions for each queue manager in the uniform cluster. We've now seen how CCDTs facilitate rebalancing in a uniform cluster and introduced you to the concept of connection lists. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.